This is David with Best Res Products, home of a cycle pump tire inflator that has a lifetime warranty. This video is dedicated to explaining the process of mounting a tire on a rim, whether it's tubed or tubeless. Uh, people struggle with that process. They're afraid of it or they've tried it and it didn't work. And there's a few tips that will help you with this, but first you have to understand the math behind or the physics behind how this tire goes onto a rim. This is the rim off of my BMW 800 GS. The white stuff in the middle is because I've converted it from a tube tire to tubeless. You can watch a video on that on our YouTube channel. But this, this rim has to go, or rather, this tire has to go over this rim twice. One bead, the second bead. Why is that so difficult? Well, the diameter of this tire and the diameter of this rim aren't the same. This hole in this tire is smaller than the dimension from the outside of the rim to the outside of the rim. But it's only slightly smaller than the dimension taken from the inside of the well to the far side of the rim. We're going to show you some graphics now that explain this process. We made some templates off of this wheel or this tire and this rim and we'll explain the hows and the whys. We've taken some dimensions off of this rim and this rim doesn't matter. It, your rim is going to have the same interrelation between the tire size and the rim so the the actual dimension isn't important. But we measured from here to here and that is represented on this chart. That's the outside edge of the rim and that's the outside edge of the rim. We then took a dimension from the inside of the shoulder and we put that on this chart. We call that the high on the rim shoulder. And then finally we took a dimension from the well or the concave surface of the rim to the far side and we put that mark here the bead in the well of the rim. We're dealing with three different levels of where this tire is going to fit onto the rim. The idea is that we move the tire into the well at this point right here which moves it in relation to that far side of the rim. And if we don't do that we're not going to be able to get that rubber over. Next we made a cardboard template and what this template represents is the opening in the rubber tire. This is the opening of that tire. This has to go onto the rim and if I pull it out and I try to get it through there down at the bottom and I try to do it at the top you can see that we're, we're a full inch, inch and a half that we're not going to make it. If I take and I put that tire onto the high portion of the well on the shoulder and I try to get it on we're still not going to clear the top side. And finally when I put it into the well or the concave of the rim we're almost there. Your tire will stretch that far when you spoon it onto the rim. But if you have to stretch any more than that you're going to have difficulty. Perhaps a better way to see this is with our cardboard templates. Remember this is my tire opening. This is the outside edge of the rim. If I put it on that line I'm short by an inch and a half. I can't get it over. If my tire is sitting high on the shoulder at that point I still am not clearing this upper line. But if I get this bottom edge of my tire bead into the well deep into the concave at that line. Now I am lined up here with the top edge of the rim and that's why it's easy to get it over. So where most people struggle is they're trying to get the far side of the tire because you're leaning across the tire working on it. They're trying to get that over the edge but they've got it down here high on the shoulder rim and we've got three quarters of an inch of rubber that we simply can't spoon over. Once again, 
outside of rim edge down there at the bottom, top side no way it's going to go. In the shoulder right there, it's still not going to go because we've got three quarter of an inch. And finally when we get this bead into the well of the rim, right there, we are right at our line so we can get it over the top. So here's a cutaway of a typical tire and here's the bead and here's my rim. This is what I call the high edge of the shoulder. This is where the, the tire bead is going to be sitting when it's mounted properly. And this is what I call the well or the concave portion. This is where this bead has to be in order for me to have working room on the other side. Or I'll flip the idea around. If I'm mounting this tire and I get it into the, the well at the bottom, at the top you can see that that tire is almost over the edge of the rim. And that's why when you do the first side of a mounting of a tire, you can usually hump it over just by your body weight. If I have this on the shoulder of the rim, I can't clear my bead at the top side. I've got three quarters of an inch of rubber that I simply can't stretch to get over that rim. Well, the first side is always easy. It's the second side where people have problems. And that is because you've got one bead in and you've started the other one inside the tire. in this fashion, just like that. And now I'm trying to get this second bead over. And the reason it's not going over is because down here I'm high in the shoulder. I have to get this bead crushed down so that it goes into the well so I have some working room on the other side. But even by doing that and it's difficult on a table, but even by doing that, the rest of the tire is sitting up high, and so I don't have, uh, I don't have the ability to get this over the rim at this point. I have to move this tire that way, and the only way to do that is to compress those two beads together tightly so that both of them fit into the well, so that I have working room up here. I'll show you how to do that. In the field, or at home, you should carry some extra heavy duty zip ties. Uh, these are Moto Zips from Best Rest Products. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to strap those around the tire and I'm going to cinch this tire down using the compressive force of these zip ties. Now in the field, in the past, I've just used my weight to press this down so that the the beads would come together so that they would both go into the well. But it doesn't always work and especially in a real stiff tire like that Moto Z, even I've had difficulty. So I'm now using these Moto Zips and I carry some of them on the bike at all times. And by cinching these down, I start to compress these beads together you can see that they're touching right here. And if I keep working this, I'll crush these down all the way. I only have to have an arc about this wide that's crushed down. That will get me to where I want to go. Um, you can use regular zip ties, but you'll have to use a lot of them because there's a lot of force right there. So we'll, we'll cinch these down even tighter. We'll get this tire compressed. This isn't going to hurt the tire. And you see how they've come together. If you're doing this with a tube tire, you can run the tube inside. It's not a problem. You have the valve stem through the hole in the rim. You just work around the valve stem. But now when I take, and understand that this has been twisted a little bit, now when I take this tire and I go to spoon it over the top, you can see that I'm almost over the edge of the rim on both of them.
Admittedly, the second bead is always harder to get onto the tire or onto the wheel, and that's because you've got the double thickness of both of these together. So both beads are going to want to ride up just a little bit. Let's talk for a moment about tire irons. You know, how big a tire iron do you need to carry? You know, is this going to be big enough? Well, this will overcome the tire sidewall. It'll actually break the sidewall or damage your rims. You know, not something you'd carry on the bike. You could carry 11 inch long tire irons, but you really don't need those. These are 9 inch tire irons that come with our bead breaker. But for demonstration purposes, I'm actually going to mount that Moto Z, which is a notoriously stiff tire, using 6 inch tire irons just to show you that it's not about the tire iron or the length of it. It's about proper technique, it's about squishing the beads together, it's about understanding the relationship between the well and getting the tire onto the rim as far as you can. With their, if they're in the well here, you're going to have working room down at the bottom, just as we showed in the chart. We'll show the mounting process next. So we moved out to the porch so we could get a better camera angle and give me a hard surface to work on. We're going to mount this tire onto this uh, rim. This is a rim that's been converted from tubed to tubeless. But the mounting process I'm showing you doesn't matter whether it's tubed or tubeless. The same principles apply. In a tube you would have the, the tube stuffed inside the tire as you do this. First thing I look at is the direction of rotation of my rim and I know from where the sprocket is that as the motorcycle goes this direction the tire has to have an arrow that says the direction of rotation of tire and I've confirmed that so I've got this tire set up just right. But in order to lube the side back here I need to flip it over and then I spread on some bead goop. Bead goop is a tire mounting lube stuff is slippery as can be. It's slippery when it's wet and it's sticky when it's dry and that's what we want. Okay I've got that side lubed and while I'm here I'm also going to lube the underside of this bead. Well why are you doing that David? What you have to think about is when you're mounting tires which part of the tire is going over a metal rim. And if you have that contact, then you need to lube that bead. Now you remember in the videos that we showed, uh, I said that I could probably get the first bead on by itself because I'm going to get way up into the well as shown in the diagram. So I'll start that, just one bead to begin with, and as I push that over, it easily slipped onto the far side of the rim. So I've got the first side of the tire mounted. That went very easy. The second part is more difficult. I have to get the second bead down and using those six inch tire irons I showed you, I'm going to do the traditional kneeling method where I squish the tire sidewall with my knees. I've got enough weight, I'm pretty confident I can keep that down. And then I just start spooning my way around. I have a, a bead buddy. This is a simple little tool that I use to put on the rim to screw it down and the reason is as I spoon my bead I usually go right to left. This keeps the bead from creeping up and chasing it around. So now that I've got that in place I'm just going to start skipping or hop skipping one after another. 
I'm using the hooked end to hook the rim and help pull it over. Now I can see where I'm at that I've really got this sidewall squished down with my knees. If you can get away with that, great. If not, we're going to show you the other tire, the Moto Z, which is so stiff you can't do that. I just keep working in small bites and normally I would use three tire irons but I'm having no trouble doing it with two. I'm just about ready to get that bead over but I pre-positioned this iron right in the middle because when I do this next process I found I'm not quite there but I've already got that in place and now it's just a simple matter of giving it a bit of a twist and that tire is on. So that went very quickly and easily. The beads were well lubed. Uh, that's one key. The other thing is getting this tire squished down. Considering the size of the tire opening and I had this bead into the well of the rim which gave me maximum working area up here or minimum rubber that I had to spoon into place. So now we're going to mount the stiff Moto Z Tractionator onto the rim of the 800 GS. Steve's tire was smaller in diameter, uh, softer rubber compound, but this is a different class in itself. This tire is so stiff that when I put my weight on it, I can't crush those sidewalls together the way that I would like to. I might be able to bounce it down, but I can't hold it, which means that this tire is going to want to move out of the well, and that's going to make tire mounting difficult. Remember going over to our chart, we want to get that those beads that are inside the well into the into the well at that point so that we can get the tire over on the far side. I've already checked my direction of rotation. Wheel spins wheel spins this way. Wheel spins this way and the tire direction of rotation is this way. Laid up. Once again, the first thing I'll do is I will lube up this tire so that it will slip on easily. And keeping in mind what I'm going to be sliding over, the dynamics of that, In other words, where am I going to have rubber going across metal? If I have rubber across metal, it has to be lubricated. All right. I've got that well lubed. And I'm going to get the first one into the well, going in at a diagonal. And usually, I can pump this onto the rim on the first side of the bead. There we go. Just kind of a pushing motion. The lube did its job. The first side is on. Now I need to get the second side on and I need to get that squished down tight and I can't do it with my knees.
so I've got my moto zips around my tire. I've squished those beads down together and you can look at how much room there is here. They're tight, they're squished together. So I'm going to get maximum space to work over on the opposite side. Using my three short tire irons. I'll get it started on the left. I'll put on my bead buddy so the tire doesn't creep. And now I'll start spooning the tire over. Don't take too big a bite. You want to take two or three inches or as close as you can to get that iron into the gap between the uh, rubber and the rim. We're almost there. I'm going to put my pre-positioned iron there so I can get that last little bit on. There we go. I have conquered the mighty Moto Z. I've also used this technique on the Hide Now tires uh, using this zip tie method, uh, the bead buddy, and short tire irons. You don't need something big, you just need technique. On these moto zips that I use to cinch the tire down, if you carry spares, you can cut them off. Just snip the zip, pull it out. But I've used these same moto zips on a number of tires, and it's just a matter of taking a screwdriver blade, or in this case, the, uh, the bottle opener on my Swiss Army knife and I get it in between the jaw and pry the jaw open and now I can reuse this on the trail again. So carrying probably four with you on the trail would be enough. One cautionary statement is if you use the sharp blade of a knife you might cut yourself. This is David with Best Rest Products. Thanks, we'll see you on the trail.